There we go. Got to turn on my volume. Sorry, I almost forgot to do that. How are you all doing? Thank you for showing up a little bit early. That's awesome. Um, and want to say hi to Sean and Mungo and Peter and Stoney and John. Um, Jonathan, great to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here today on YouTube. It is now a snowy day here in New Jersey. It's just started to snow, which is making me feel all holiday spirity. And um, I'm really excited to be uh, here today to share this information on networking with you. So just to double check, anyone, uh, there's usually a 30 second delay. So is everything, um, everything coming through okay? Is my sound okay? Is my video okay? Are we all good? Let me know, give me a chat up in the comments. I want to uh, welcome um, my wonderful and uh, the talented and beautiful Joselle Tech, who is on my team at Verhal Brand Design. She is my marketing administrator, and she is here in the chat, moderating the chat as usual. She says it's all good, so we're all good. Aaron, great to see you. Uh, Candy, um, John, uh, Graphico Design, awesome. Everything sounds good. Cool. Well, I tell you. I got a tremendous amount of content to go through today. And uh, I gave this presentation live in the Brand Design Masters Facebook group. And I'm gonna put that up on the screen really quickly. It's probably gonna go over my face. If you are not a member of the Brand Design Masters Facebook group, please get over there and join. You have to answer a few questions to get in and uh, provide your email address, but it's a free group and uh, I'm in there a lot and I do lives there. I generally do my content lives there first before I go on YouTube. So the people in there get to see and hear things first. Um, so please jump over to Facebook and join the Brand Design Masters Facebook group if for any reason you are not a member. I would love to see you over there. And also that's where I announce all of my um, special content and exclusive stuff for my for my tribe who is really much more connected with me and we do that on Facebook. So um, please do that. It's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash brand design masters and that's where you can sign up. Zoom FX, great to see you. Gaston, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Um, so today I'm gonna jump right into it. We're going to talk about networking. And as I said, I gave this presentation on Facebook yesterday and I, had a, I have a lot of content and there's a lot of bullets and I want you to guys just to bear with me on that. I was like flying through it yesterday and Peter knows this. I was on my Red Bull kick and um, I was moving really fast and Joselle in the comments said, slow down. And so I tried to, but here's the thing, I have, I have at least 45 minutes, if not an hour worth of content to get through. So if I don't go fast, I'm not gonna get through it in time. And I wanna be respectful of all your guys' time um, for giving me your time here today. Bridget, great to see you. Um, Bridget, her name says presentation expert and Bridget is an, a presentation expert. She was in guild number two and my paid mastermind group, and she is an amazing expert in slide presentations. So for any reason, you do a lot of slide presentations and need help with that or have clients who do, hit up Bridget Callahan because she is amazing. Um, Hashem is here, Ivy is here, great. People are coming in, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it, okay you guys? You good? All right, oh. And I'm gonna take some Q&A at the end. The Q&A that I'm gonna take at the end is going to have to be around <clears throat> networking, all right? It's not gonna be just an all general Q&A. It's gonna be around the content from this presentation. So please, um, if you have a question, type your question, type the word question in all caps and put it in the chat. Joselle will grab that, feed it to me through Facebook Messenger, and at the end, I will answer questions. If I don't have any questions, I'll pop off. Okay, guys, hey, Sonia, good to see you. Um, all right, so let's dig into it, all right? You guys ready? Okay, I gotta activate my slides over here. Get her in my cursor. <clears throat> All right, do you guys have any of these issues? Do you have a small network? Or maybe you're not really sure exactly how to grow your network. Or whether you even have confusion around whether you're going about networking in the right way. And tacking on to networking, because networking is so deeply linked to business development, 
Are you having trouble getting bigger or better projects than you usually work? And networking can definitely help with that. Or are you possibly feeling uh, isolated because of COVID-19? We are all feeling isolated because of COVID-19 and it has been going on a long time and it looks like in the United States anyway, it's gonna continue to go on for a long time. So networking digitally is more important than ever. And so what we're gonna be covering today is we're gonna talk about how you can build your network painlessly and easily. And there's one way which is incredibly painless and incredibly easy that I'm gonna be sharing with you and how you can also find trusted partners to work with or subcontractors through networking. And through this, how you can develop a confidence in networking and a confidence in making the decisions that you need to make every single day in your business. And for freelancers and people who have their own businesses, making decisions is sometimes a struggle, a struggle and a stumbling block. And we're going to talk about that. Also, how to grow your business and make more money, because that's all we want to do, right? And so... Imagine your next year. What if it looked like this? What if it looked like you had a network of dozens of trusted partners and you were bigging, booking your biggest client projects ever and you were completely confident in the decisions that you had to make day to day? And maybe you're, if you get smaller projects these days, $500,000, what if you're getting 10, 20, $30,000 projects, $50,000 projects instead of the size projects you're getting now? Those sorts of things can be benefits of networking. So, and also, what if you knew that someone always had your back, that you always had the support of a really strong network and people that you could bounce dis, uh, decisions and questions off of so you were certain that you were going about your business and making the correct decisions every single day? Does that sound good? Hey, Natalie. Hey, Natalie is here. Awesome. Natalie shot me an email yesterday responding to my newsletter. Um, and uh, I really appreciate the feedback on that. So if any of you aren't on my email list, please go to my website, philipvandusen.com and sign up for my email list because I send out a newsletter periodically and um, some people really love it. It's got a lot of resources in it. Um, and so what if you didn't have to second guess your decisions every day? And what if you felt really confident that your new business pipeline is gonna be full and that you didn't feel so alone and you had a network of subject matter experts and people who you felt really tight with and friendly with and who knew you and you knew them and you didn't have to feel so alone. So now let's talk about how we're gonna get there, right? How are we gonna get there? Part of it is tactics. Part of it is stuff that you have to do, right? But then also part of it is mindset. And mindset is a key part of this. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into mindset later in the presentation. But part of it is what you do, part of it is how you think. So I wanna make sure that you kind of keep that in your mind as we go through this. Is everyone tracking with me? Ooh, Natalie gave me stars, I love that. Oh, the other thing, I want to mention is that on YouTube, there was a little thing, a little dollar sign, little icon that is a way for you to add a little bit money into my chip to, tip jar on the top of my YouTube piano. And if you feel like throwing me some coffee money, that would be really awesome for giving you all of the free content that I provide here on YouTube. Any kind of super chat um, donations, I will gladly accept. So just quickly about me, a lot of people who, who follow me already on YouTube or are in my Facebook group kind of know my backstory, but I just want to give it very, very quickly. And that is that I've got 20 years, 25 plus years of experience. I've spent eight years in global branding agencies working with some of the biggest clients in the world. I've been running my own agency for six years. And I've also been on the client side. So I've been a VP of design at a couple major corporations. So I've worked both sides of the street, the agency and the corporate side of the street, and understand both those sides of the street, as well as now having made a split from that big agency, big corporate world into my own digital entrepreneurship agency world. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit right now. So back then, I was a VP of design at big companies, worked with lots of big clients, ECD at a couple big global branding agencies. And so I had that big corporate agency part of my career. But here's, and oh, and some of the clients that I've worked with. 
so uh, some of these case studies are on my website if you're curious about this sort of work that I did. But I've worked with really, really big companies, and I've worked with a lot of um, now small to medium-sized companies and entrepreneurs. But one day, after my 25-plus year career in big corporate, big agency, everything changed. I burned out. I hit a period in my life where I really kind of questioned whether I loved what I was doing anymore. I had some family stuff that was going on with aging parents, and I just kind of maxed out. I hit a wall, and I decided to leave the biggest role of my career. And when I did that, it was a big watershed moment in my career. I had to rediscover my love of design and branding. And I left my role, my fancy title, my big paycheck. I suddenly didn't have any clients. I didn't have my own agency. I had no personal brand, no social media presence, a two-page website. And here's the key thing and the point that I want to make about this today is that when I did that, when I made that huge shift, I walked away from my network. My network were all people and clients that I'd worked with in the companies and agencies that I was in before. And really when it came down to it, those people were not going to be useful to me in my new realm. I was kind of naked and alone. And so my old network was really not going to help me in working with as a digital entrepreneur or working with small to medium sized businesses. I'd never posted content. I didn't have an email list. I didn't, I was alone in my home office. Now I ran an office, but I was alone in my home office and I had to start, start from scratch essentially all over again. And so here's the point I want to make to you guys today is that yes, I've had this long illustrious corporate and agency career, right? But when I went out on my own, everything started from zero. Everything started from scratch. So what I have built for myself, I have built over the last five years, really, when it comes down to it, from absolute scratch. So if I've done it, you can do it. And everything that I've learned, I'm going to share with you today. And I realized at that point that I had to totally invest in myself in a very different way. And the way I invested in myself was one thing that kind of was a very turnkey move for me, and I'm gonna share that with you a little later. It is the easiest way to network and to build your business. And that thing that I did changed everything. So after I did that one thing, I started learning at an incredible rate. I built a new network from scratch. I added rocket fuel to my agency business. And I started to land clients from the content that I was putting out into the world. And everything really started from that moment and changed. And so now, hey, Ta Tahana, Tahana, yeah, good to see you. Sonia, I said hello to you already. Great to see you guys all here. Thank you for joining me. So now I have a very different world. I have a very different brand ecosystem, the Philip Van Dusen brand ecosystem. I have a YouTube channel, which you're on right now. Lots of videos, lots of views. I have a popular newsletter, a podcast, a Facebook group, mastermind groups. I post a lot of content. I do speaking engagements and I appear on podcasts. So I've built a very different world for myself, a very different business for myself. And I have done that through this methodology. So what we're going to cover today are five key things. We're going to talk about the creative economy really quickly. And then we're also going to talk about painless networking or how to network really easily and the power of specialist partners in helping you do that and how you can engage with specialist partners, increasing your confidence, and then the easiest way to network. Okay. So you guys tracking with me? Are we good? Um, Arshia, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, so now we are going to jump in. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to be moving fast, so try to keep up with me. All right, JT, you good? All right. Um, businesses rely on creativity now more than ever. Because the world has gone digital in the last 10 years and the explosion of social media, the explosion of digital marketing, businesses rely on creativity more than ever. They need media, they need animation, they need sound, they need imagery. The explosion of the gaming industry, AR, VR, all of the social platforms. Companies need creative more than they ever have in history. And we are, as a creative professionals, 
are in a perfect position to benefit from this change in the economy. And so I want you to pay attention to that because if you ain't making it right now, if you ain't making bucks right now, there's, there's, there should be no reason for it because the economy is so positive for creative professionals right now. And we are living in the rise of the creative economy and the rise of the creative class. The number of creative professionals has gone from like 5% of the population to about 20% of the working population right now. Creativity has exploded. And you are part of that. And so let's talk about the keys to success. What are your keys to success in the creative economy? How do you win in the creative economy? Let's talk about the skill sets that you need. And there are a reason I'm going to be talking about these skill sets because they, they, they point directly to networking. And this is leading up to the approach that I'm going to be talking about in networking. Hey, Leah. Good to see you, Peter. Yes, you're right. Amy McGlynn is here. Amy McGlynn. She is awesome. Amy McGlynn is one of the best copywriters I know, if not the best copywriter, and an amazing person. She was also the um, a member of Guild Mastermind Number Two, and totally rocked it. Um, and so, actually, I think she was in Guild One. Yes, Guild One. Sorry, my mistake. So, first of all, you need a core creative skill. So, I'm just going to say. If you're a creative professional, you have your core creative skill. You're either a photographer or you're a writer or you're, you know, you do slides like Bridget or you um, do 3D animation or you're a web developer, whatever that is. We start there, right? But then to win in the creative economy today, because creative has, the prices of creative have been seriously pushed down because of the global, the availability of creative across the global economy, you need more as a creative professional to survive in the creative economy these days. You need business acumen. These are when the bullet points start to fly past fast, so keep this up. You need um, business development skills. You need content development skills. You need marketing skills. Excuse me. You have to be incredibly resourceful to find what you need to get your job done and the work done for your clients. And these go white because they really link back strongly to networking as many of these others do. You also have, the, have to have a supreme confidence in the decisions that you are making in your business so you're not floundering around and going in the wrong direction. And you have to have a powerful network because of the rise of the creative class and how much kind of the virtual agency model and partnership models have exploded in the creative professions, everybody is working with everybody else on projects and bringing people into projects and being hired by other people for projects. And uh, if you are an independent in any kind of way, having that kind of network is really key. And you have to be really good at setting strategic goals for yourself. So. These are the sorts of skills that you need to survive in the creative economy. Sorry, my thing didn't go forward. Okay. And as I said, as a creative pro right now, you should be killing it. And are, and are you missing one of those skill sets in those bullet points that I showed? Of course you are. All of us are. Not all of us are exceptional at all of those things that you need to have in order to really survive in the creative economy. But here's the thing. What can get you those skill sets or how you add to your toolkit so you can really kill it is that one thing. That one thing that I'm going to tell you about. How, that one thing that's going to fill those gaps. And it is your network. Now, I'm going to talk later about the easiest way to network, but let's talk about networking a little bit. Networking, number one, can be totally uncomfortable. Like, you guys know this, right? I mean, reaching out to people you haven't talked to in a long time on LinkedIn or reaching out to new clients or, you know, if you go to a physical conference in the old days when we used to be able to see each other in person, going to a conference and 
walking up to someone you don't even know who they are and looking at their name tag and putting out your hand and meeting someone new. We have to meet new people now digitally like that. And I don't know about you, but a lot of creative pros I know, and I am a real introvert. And so those sorts of situations where I'm in a real live networking situation, I am totally a wallflower. Like if you ever see me at a conference, come over and say hi and put out your hand because chances are I am like, you know, petrified. I'm, I'm getting better at it, but it's not easy. It's not easy for anybody, even the people who are really good at it. And so networking can be uncomfortable, but how do we make it less comfortable? I mean, more comfortable. Let's not make it less comfortable. Your network is more important. This is an important thing I'm gonna say here, and I thought a lot about this when I created this slide. Your network is more critical to your success than your creative skills. You can have that base creative skill, photographer, illustrator, designer, typographer, whatever that is, but your network is more important to your success in the creative economy than your creative skill because creative skills have been commoditized because of the global economy. But your broadened skill set is what is going to help you win. And because we all can't do everything perfectly, your network is what's going to bring that to you. So how do you go about sourcing a network, right? Hey, Blue, welcome. <clears throat> Sourcing a network, how do you source a network? We start, um, LinkedIn's a great place to start, and you should always be paying attention to keeping in contact with people that you come into contact with in your professional life. But ex-classmates, ex-coworkers, people that you might have subcontracted with or used as subcontractors, going to conferences, which right now is not an option, um, AIGA, Fuse, South by Southwest, Social Media Marketing World, amazing conferences and probably one of the best places to really network. You can also join professional organizations like the AIGA or any number of um, art directors clubs in uh, metropolitan areas around the United States anyway. Facebook groups like the Brand Design Masters Facebook group. And when you are joining a professional Facebook group, make sure that you don't lurk, that you're not a lurker, you're not sitting on the sidelines, you, that you engage, you ask questions, you do posts, you communicate with people because that's how you build relationships online. You can also try old school by joining your local chamber of commerce. And this is something that a lot of people ignore and it has an incredible uh, opportunity to connect with local businesses who need design, branding, and creative help. So join your local chamber of commerce. Lots of times it costs like $25 a year, something insanely low, and they have meetups and you can meet local business owners and it's a great way to make yourself visible in your community locally. And then there's things like meetup.com where you can go to sign up for events that happen in real life. And then there's also mastermind groups like the Brand Design Masters Guild that I run. What are the benefits of networking? And all of this builds into what I'm gonna be pushing the easiest way at the end. What are the benefits of networking? Most of your clients, most of clients period, will come from word of mouth through somebody that you know. Most jobs, so full-time jobs, agencies, corporations, come from networking. They come from your connections. Everyone knows that applying for a job online is like throwing your resume into a big black hole. You can fill out a million forms, you know, retype your resume through all this stuff, and then you hit send and it, you never hear anything back. The online job application system is completely and utterly broken. Jobs come from connections, making sure that your resume, your portfolio is getting on the desk of the hiring manager, and that happens through people that you know. It helps you stay current, so you stay up on what's new in your industry. It helps you learn about and share new resources with each other, because no one can know everything about everything. You share projects, so you can help, um, you know, help other people survive and grow and prosper by bringing them on as partners in your projects. And you can also be hired as a subcontractor or a partner in other projects. Those things come through networking. You can share best practices. You can well, 
in best practices, there's a lot of things. There's business, there's financial, there's organizational and time management, there's subcontractors in best business practices. And also, and this is not to be, um, not to be minimized, but networking makes digital entrepreneurship and solopreneurship a lot less lonely. And having friends and having connections and relationships that you have that you can hop on Zoom or hop on a phone call or just text and kind of check in with somebody and get some feedback is really, really, it kind of pumps you up, gives you energy, the will and the force to go on, right? So those are some of the be benefits of networking. And you will see the aspects of the winning in the creative economy, the benefits of networking, and this next thing that I'm going to talk about, how all those things align, meaning these bullet points are almost the exact same on all these slides, which you'll see, and which shows that the methods that I'm going to be talking about are really the best, me best methods to, to go to use, right? All right. Sorry, a little refreshment. Okay, if you gotta start somewhere, if you gotta start somewhere in building your network, the best place to start is by building peer partnerships or peer relationships with other designers, other subject matter experts, maybe not in your discipline, maybe in a different discipline, right? So you're, you're a web developer, meet a designer, you're a web developer, you know, connect with a photographer. Start by building partnerships. How do you go about building a partnership or a relationship, a networked relationship with someone who is a peer creative professional? The first thing you have to figure out is what makes you, you. What do you bring to the table? What do you have? And I'm just gonna flip through these bullets really quickly. So you as a creative professional bring your knowledge and your skills to the table, to a relationship. You may have any number of the things that you see coming by here on my little numbered list. You may be creative, you may know strategy, you may know media, or you're great at account management, or you're great at business consulting, or you, you have already a great, uh, you know, a, a network of uh, partners that you can share with somebody else. You're great at marketing, you're great at, you know, a marketing planning or marketing management. Understand what it is that you're bringing to the table. Make a list of those things because when you start to network, what you want to do is you want to augment those skills. How to win in the creative economy, you need all these skills. What skills of those do you have? What are you missing? Make a catalog of who you are, what makes you you, and then start to look for network connections who can really build out you into a more fully fledged survivor of the creative economy. How do you do that? So how do you build partners? How do you start partnering? One of the things about starting with peers is that it's, you can go about it in a much more natural way. It's not like you're looking to network with prospective clients, which has got that uncomfortability of the fact that you're trying to sell something eventually to someone. Working with a peer, you're not really trying to sell them hard. You're just trying to get to know somebody and to learn what they do. So how do you go about starting to partner? It's a low impact, natural way of networking that is less uncomfortable and it can lead to some of, as many of, the really great benefits of networking that can be had, right? So, how do you start partnering? First of all, remember, 80% of people out there are open to new partnerships. So, if you're worried about rejection, don't worry about it because almost all of us, almost all creative professionals are open to a certain extent to making new connections and learning about new people and new partners. You want to ask questions. You want to be curious. Asking questions of other people and learning about who they are, both personally and professionally, is one of the best ways to network. You don't have to go out of the gate talking about yourself and everything you do and everything you bring to the table and all that sort of stuff. Just ask questions. Just learn about what people do. Ping them on LinkedIn and say, 
I, you know, I see that you do X in your profile. I really love to learn more about what you do. Can you, you know, spare five or 10 minutes on a quick zoom? I'd love to meet you. What skills do they have? So learn about what they do, what they're great at, what their creative economy skill set is, and figure out whether they have skills that might be able to augment yours. When you make those relationships and start to build them, you want to also learn about what level those people are operating at. So what do they charge? And ask them, you know, what do you usually charge hourly or per project? Do you bill per project? Do you bill per hour? You know, find out where they fall on the pricing spectrum because if you eventually do partner with them, you're going to want to be able to mark up their work when you use them as a subcontractor and knowing where they fall on that pricing scale matters a lot. So ask eventually, once you make that connection, you want to ask what it is that you can do for them. Let them know about your skill set, what you bring to the table, if that skill could be of use to them in any way or, and here's a key thing, or to anybody that they know. When you make that kind of, uh, that, that, when you put that out on the table and say, can I help you in any way, you also want to add in, if I can't help you, is there anybody that you know that might be able to, that I might be able to be helpful to? Always tack that in there. Ask them what the best way to engage is. How do they like to be communicated with? Is it text? Is it email? Is it video? And think about your first interactions with them as being low stakes. So if you use them as a contractor or a subcontractor or partner with them on a project, make sure to do it in kind of a small way to begin with if you don't know a lot about them or know about what they're like because you don't want to work for the very first time with somebody on some big important project and have it go south so think about that and in, before you do that you might want to get some references from people hey Todd the Mew it's great to see you in here Mari awesome Madness Joe cool all these people showing up Amy so great to see you guys so that's how you start partnering and because partnering with peers is easier than with client prospects, then it's you can go about it in a much more conversational, natural way, and it's less pressure, right? And it's going to be much more mutual rather than one-sided. So that is one of the most natural ways of networking, one of the easiest ways to network. And so let's talk about the benefits of partner networking. And this is the golden egg, right? When you, partner, when you partner with people, and like I said, these are peers, these are not potential clients, what happens and what you're, the benefits you're going to get from that kind of natural networking are you will immediately get a wider new business net. So like I said, when you meet them and say, is there anything I can do for you, videographer, if you're a graphic designer, or you, photographer, if you're a web developer, and then you say, is there any, anybody that you know that might be able, that I could be helpful to? You are suddenly overnight kind of 2xing your your new business net. So if you think about the sales funnel and all of the people that you are being exposed to or being exposed to you as a creative pro delivering stuff, by meeting one person and put and developing a relationship and putting yourself out to them as a service provider, you have now widened your new business funnel, right? So now they're looking for people that might be able to feed you new business. And every person you add multiplies at times two. It gives you bigger project capacity. So when you make these relationships, if you get a project that is, you're a graphic designer and has a tremendous amount of deep web development in it that you don't do, if you got some people in your network who are web developers, that broadens your ability to take on those sorts of project projects. And it gives you more decision-making power. So if you are un concerned about a decision you're making or you need some feedback on some creative work or how you're approaching a particular thing or how you're going about organizing your day, you have decision-making brain power. And also in projects, you have decision-making brain power added to it if you have a partner. You get exposed to new practices. You build business management skills. Now I want you to notice as we go through these, how these are aligning with the, what you need to do in a creative economy to win and also what it takes to <clears throat> what it takes to build and benefit from a network so 
by developing these partnerships, those are the things that you're going to start to see. You'll be practicing reciprocal relationships. So there is EQ, I mean, there's IQ, right? So intelligence, and then there's EQ, which is emotional intelligence. And so you can be great at tactics, but you also have to be great at relationships and communicating. So developing, sorry, I'm stumbling, developing partner network relationships gives you an opportunity to, in a low stakes way, practice communication and reciprocal relationships with people without the added stress of it being a client. It also, as I said, widens your new business network, but it also spreads your reputation more broadly in a good way. And when it comes down to it, it's really good karma because you're helping other people succeed and they are helping you succeed. And I strongly believe in good karma and what you put out into the world. If you are giving about it, goodness will come back to you, which is why I'm here on YouTube, which is why I'm sharing everything that I know with you for free is I believe that good karma is cyclical and it will come back to you if you put goodness out into the world in caring and love and give freely, that will come back to you. And it has proven to be correct in my business. Hey, Marco, good to see you. Asif, great to see you too. Thank you guys for joining me. Ernesto, awesome. Um, all right, so you want to win in the creative economy, you want to network like a badass, and you want to explore partnerships right? Those are the big ones. What were the ones I'm missing that I said what I was going to talk about at the very beginning? Confidence and the easiest way. Confidence. Let's talk about confidence. The biggest barrier for most people when it comes to making decisions is confidence that the decisions they're making are correct. And what happens with that is that that is a result of being insular, of being non-networked, of not having a lot of close relationships you can bounce decisions off of. And so let's talk about building confidence a little bit. I got to take a little bit of drink here, so give me a sec. Nikhil, good to see you. I mean, great to see you too. Thank you guys for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Let's talk about building confidence. <clears throat> confidence is built. It comes by doing. A lot of people think that confidence is just something innate, something you're born with. Like people are rah, rah, wow, they're so confident. Confidence doesn't come by accident. Confidence is built over time by doing things again and again and again. And confidence, building confidence takes action. All of this will link into the whole network thing too when, it, just trust me on this. You have to show up and be visible. So as a digital entrepreneur, creative professional to network, you have to show up and you have to be visible. You can't sit in the back like a wallflower. You have to take some action and you have to dare to suck. Anyone who follows me on YouTube, anyone who's in my Facebook group, anyone who's been in any of my masterminds know that I use this phrase a lot, dare to suck, because you gotta get out there and you have to be willing to fail in order to grow. <clears throat> You want to surround yourself with action takers. The famous quote is that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And that is so true when it comes to being a creative pro or a ent digital entrepreneur in any fashion. Surround yourself with people who are goal setters, accountability people, and action takers. That, because that will rub off on you, absolutely. I always say also that I'm a lifelong learner and you got to constantly be open to learning new stuff and learning new stuff. Whenever you learn new things, you're building confidence. You want to be able to set goals and be held accountable to those goals. And you want to strive to be 1% better. A lot, of, you know, a lot of people think, you know, I, I have to make huge bounds in, in what I'm doing. I have to like be this entirely different person. You know, Philip's freaking me out with all this creative economy stuff. I got to like, you know, move the ball forward like 50 yards. No, you don't. You have to strive to be 1% better every day. You have to make a move, take an action, congratulate yourself for that action and be 1% better every day. Small increments and repetition is what builds confidence and make sure to celebrate your wins. Like I said, when you have that checklist, 
like I have I have a I keep a list of quarterly goals and annual goals and monthly goals and I I the the items that I check off I always keep on the list so when I get to the end of the year I can go back and look at all the stuff I accomplished or even the end of the week or the end of the month because a lot of times when you're working on big goals or even small goals when you check it off and move to the next thing, you kind of forget. You kind of forget that you accomplished this thing. Building a co confidence means going back and congratulating yourself for your wins and also helping other people succeed. Again, that good karma thing. Helping other people succeed will build confidence in yourself because you are sharing what you know and you are helping other people grow and move ahead. And I also say this, sorry, and my, my talk, my, my videos in their way, but don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to you yesterday. Be that 1% better. All right, now we're going to get into it. What is that one thing that I did? I talked at the very beginning that I took one action that really turned it for me when I went out on my own. When I became a digital entrepreneur and left big corporate, big agency behind, my title, my salary, my network, I left behind. What was that one big thing that I did that really unlocked my business for me? And this is the one easiest way to network. The easiest way to network. I joined a pain mastermind group. And when I did that, I had an overnight network and it catapulted my business forward. It was like adding rocket fuel to my business. A mastermind is the one place where you are guaranteed to build a network, increase your confidence, and get those creative economy winning skills fast. So that's why I went through all those things in the five, you know, the five list at the very beginning of this presentation. All of the things that I'm mentioning are the things that you benefit from from joining a mastermind group and are the benefits of having a really strong and powerful network because the mastermind is that network and it brings all of those things to the table which is why it makes it the easiest way to network because it encapsulates all of those things of surviving and prospering in the creative economy and the number one feedback that I get from masterminds that I run is an increased confidence and then an overnight trusted network. You can build a network person by person, but it takes a hell of a lot of time. And joining mastermind is one way to do it really quickly. Hey, Anna. Hey, Joe. I saw, saw you already earlier, Joe. So let's talk quickly about the power of mastermind groups. And again, like I said, the bullet points that I went through in the creative economy, the bullet points that I went through with the benefits of building partnerships, those are the bullet points that you're going to see here. And the power of masterminds is that you get a network overnight, like I said. You move into a phase of accelerated learning. You are surrounding yourself with action takers, people, people who are smarter than you, people who know more than you, people who will be able to motivate you and get you to a new, better place quickly. There are more resources, meaning you're, you know, you're geometrically multiplying your exposure to new resources. You don't have to go out there and flounder around on the internet trying to learn things and trying to find stuff. You have that delivered <laughs> to your door by people who already used it, who already know whether it's great or it sucks, right? And that's one of the amazing things about masterminds. You get exposed to new resources like you wouldn't believe. And you never really think about that as being an important thing, but it really is. You get the ability to set goals and be held accountable. And setting goals and having just setting a goal is one thing because you can set a goal and it'll slip and it'll slip and it'll slip for yourself. But as soon as you tell that goal to somebody else, as soon as you expose that goal to a group of people, you suddenly have to show up to that goal. There is a psychological um, kind of commitment that happens in voicing a goal to a group. And the ability to hit goals and move forward happens so much more fastly and concretely in a mastermind group. You get feedback and evalu uh, validation. So not only can you ask people questions and get feedback 
on on decisions you're making, on creative that you're doing, on an approach to a project that you have. You can also get validation that those decisions that you're thinking of making are right or wrong, or maybe you should think about it in a different way. That's one of the things about confidence that I also hear from my masterminds is that people who had or were thinking of making certain decisions, they got validation that what they were going to do was right and strong from the group that they were in. Again, new business. New business comes to you through being involved in mastermind groups and developing that overnight network of trusted partners because you are multiplying your new business funnel and your exposure to uh, your new business net by getting involved in a mastermind group and it builds that confidence. Masterminds are the easiest way to network. Masterminds are an investment to achieve your goals. And I say investment because when I said what I did, I joined a paid mastermind group. When you join a paid mastermind group, your mindset and what you put into it and what the other person, people who invested to be in that mastermind put into it, the energy, the focus, the intention that they put into that mastermind is different than when it's a free mastermind. I guarantee you that. Because I've been a member of a lot of masterminds that are just, you know, a collection of folks. But I've all, but the ones that I've been in and the ones that I've run that are paid, it's a very different story. So, one, I want you, and this is where we talk about mindset a little bit. I want you tell your clients that they need to invest in branding, they need to invest in creative, they need to invest in copywriting or strategy, so their businesses can move forward. Right? You get them and you convince them to give you money in order to move your business forward. You, they need to invest in their business to make it grow in the future, right? It's a core thing of how we sell creative work. Now, you need to think about that in the same way. And this is the mindset part that I talked about at the very beginning of the workshop, which is you need to think about your business in exactly the same way. You need to invest time and money in networking so your business can grow in the future. So I want to ask you this question and be honest with yourself. When was the last time you truly invested in the success of your business? And I'm not, that could have been going to a conference, which is a financial commitment and a time commitment. It could have been, you know, going to a meetup. It could have been joining a mastermind. Think about this. Most clients and most businesses in the world invest anywhere from 10, 5, 10, 15, 20% of their annual revenue in marketing and in business development. So they spend money to make money. And so ask this question, do this equation for yourself, right? What would you invest to get a $20,000 project? So if you had to invest money to make money, would you invest 20% like most companies do in marketing and business development? Would you invest maybe half of that, 10%? Would you invest $2,000 to get a $20,000 project? You have to think about it in your mindset in that way. Let's th think about it annually, okay, right? Say you wanted to make $200,000 in you know, a year, but you wanted to start that in 2021. What would you invest in order to make $200,000 next year? Would you invest 20%, 40K? Would you half that again, which is a small number, 10%? Would you invest 20K to make 200K next year? It's a mindset of investment that will lead to growth and to lead to the abundance in your business. I want to say that again because this is really important. It's a mindset of investment you have to invest that will lead to abundance. How I invested to achieve what I've achieved in five years, you saw that list, that slide at the very beginning of my personal brand <laughs> ecosystem right now, is all been built in five years. How I invested to achieve that abundance was I joined a paid mastermind group. That was the one thing that was one key unlock that made it easy for me to move forward at incredible speed. So now I now this is a time where it's about you. Think about this. What's your plan? That's my question. What is your plan? What's your plan to move forward? How do you achieve the benefits 
of a mastermind group because you've seen through this presentation that how you get to survive in the creative economy is you build partnerships, you build a network. How can you achieve the benefits of a mastermind which encapsulates all of those things? The way I see it, you have three options. You can do the things the way you've always done them and then you can hope for the best, right? You can go about your networking and your relationships and your clients and your projects the way you always have and you can kind of go, oh, it, I'm gonna try to build a new work, network and then you can hope that it works. Or you can build your network and your confidence over time more concertedly and do it on your own, right? You can do all of the stuff and make that investment on your own. So what is your investment what would your investment be? How much would it cost you to get the benefits of a mastermind if you're doing it on your own, okay? Let's say you decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the benefits of mastermind, but I'm gonna do it on my own. I'm gonna make that investment. What would it cost you to do that? Let's look at some scenarios, okay? So you go to a conference. I was gonna go to Social Media Marketing World this year for like my third year in a row, and it got canceled. But if I look at the price tag of that, the conference, the hotel, the travel and airfare, and altogether that costs about three grand, three and a half grand, right? And so if you were to go to a conference and meet nine people, that investment just to meet the people, not to build deep relationships yet, would cost you about $3,500. If you did in-depth networking solo, let's say you met those nine people at the conference and then you needed to do like six hours of Zoom with each one of them. And let's say your time is worth about $75 an hour. You do that math and you come up with about $4,000. So if you were to do it on your own, say you know nine people that you want to build deep relationships with, this is how much it's going to cost you in your time and money in order to do that on your own. Let's say you combine, you go to the conference, you make that investment, and then after you meet nine people, you, you have those, those Zoom calls in order to build deep relationships with them. You add those two costs together and you're getting into like the seven grand, eight grand region, right? Or you could go about this on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? You, could, you can engage me to do coaching with you one-on-one -on -one to help you build your network quickly. And 13 hours of coaching with me, $400 an hour, it's about five grand, okay? you get volume discounts. So if you actually want to do coaching with me, it's a little less than this if you, you know, book 13 hours. Anyway, but you understand what I'm trying to get at. Or you can do it with us. And when I say do it with us, what do I mean? What I mean is the Brand Design Masters Guild. The Brand Design Masters Guild is my paid mastermind group that I run. And I started these about six months ago. To date, I have run two. And I'm looking to build guild number three, which is going to launch in early 2021. What does that look like? The Brand Design Masters Guild are 10 people. One of them is me, so there's nine other people in each of the masterminds. This is guild number one. This was guild number two. Guild number two just tied up. A couple people who are in the chat right now were in these guilds. <clears throat> and what does a guild mastermind look like? So I have videos on what masterminds are and how they work. So if you don't really know anything about how masterminds work, go back and look at some of those videos. But it's an intimate nine member group and you get, it's a 12 week period of time. And once a week we do an hour Zoom call. And then there's also a hot seat where one or two times during that 12 weeks, you will have a period of time where the entire group focuses on your challenges and gives you suggestions on how to build your business. Those are called the hot seats. And then we also have one-on-one. -on so each member of the group meets with another member of the group once a week and they rotate, right? So you have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with somebody once a week as well, where you build a deeper level of connection and deeper level of relationships. And then all this stuff, well, anyway, the 12 Zoom meetings with the group are all recorded and available to you 24-7. But you also get a private Facebook group. And in that private Facebook group, that's where everybody in the guild hangs out when we're not meeting. And they ask questions, they share resources, they share ideas, they post, you know, creative for feedback. 
it's a free for all and it's awesome because there are no rules. Like the, if you're a member of the brand design masters Facebook group, you know, there's rules, right? You can't self promote, you can't post links, you can't do a lot of stuff because it's a free group and it's huge. But in the, the private guild Facebook mastermind, there are new rules. You can do anything, you can post anything, you can go live, whatever. It's very vibrant and interactive community. And, um, you also get guidance and feedback directly from me. So, you are going to be now in the inner circle of Philip's brand ecosystem, and I'm going to learn and get to know you on a much, much deeper level. So if you have been valuing my content, my input, and what I put out into the world, and you want to get more integrated and more exposure to me, this is the place to do it. I also periodically bring in guest experts on specific topics that the group might be interested in. This is what the Facebook group looks like. You know what a Facebook group looks like, right? This is what the guild looks like inside of the product where all the videos and the resources and stuff like that are housed. On top of all that, you are going to get, like I said, an instant network of professional partners that have your back. And you'll notice how these bullets are aligning with all the stuff that I went through in terms of how you survive in the creative economy, right? and your motivation and accountability to, to achieve your goals. You're gonna sharpen your design skills, your marketing skills, your strategy skills, your abilities overall, and your knowledge and ability to land bigger and better uh, client contracts and projects. And again, the one piece of feedback that I receive over and over and over again from Guild people is the confidence that they are making the right decisions or confidence that they can make the right decisions, confidence in themselves. This is just some of, you know, a few verbatims from the, the wide range of feedback that I've received about the Guild. It has been very popular and the people in the Guild have experienced real transformations in their business. Some of them are in the chat here today. Um, and they, I didn't pay them to be in the chat. <laughs> they, those people in the chat who, are, who were part of the guild know that they are part of my inner circle right now. Know that I know who they are. I know a lot about their businesses. I promote their businesses. I talked about Amy being a copywriter. I talked about Bridget being an amazing slide producer. I mean, you are now part of my inner circle. And so there are benefits <laughs> for becoming part of these, these guilds. And so what's the guild effect? I'm not going to go crazy into this, but essentially when you make the psychological and the financial commitment to be part of a mastermind, something happens. Meaning the mindset shift that you go through and the financial investment that you make starts to manifest manifest things in reality. And I know this sounds totally woo woo and you know, you're going to go, Oh, that's such a crock. But it's not, because when people make the commitment to be in the guild, things start happening in their business, and sometimes even before the guild starts. But definitely when it starts. Some of the members' results that have happened, and I'm not gonna walk through these, I'm just gonna run through the bullets, but people have gotten their biggest clients before even launching their, their agency. They've landed 20K projects. They have gotten some of the biggest clients of their, of their careers. They have been hired as subcontractors by other guild members. They have hired other guild members as, as subcontractors. They've expanded their client base. They have, um, they have, you know, walked away with more work and more connections than they've ever had. And so, what does this cost? What is the investment? The investment is fourteen ninety seven. Fourteen ninety seven for twelve weeks of our Zoom calls. 12 weeks of one-on-ones, one hour consultation, one-on-one -on -one with me and the private Facebook group, all of that stuff for $14.97. And the value of the hour with me, plus you get actually 12 hours with me with all the Zoom calls is a $400 value. And the enrollment is going to pretty much close out in at Christmas time. So there's, this is kind of time stamped and I'm, out there promoting this um, pretty heavily. So it's gonna fill up, I can guarantee you that. You might be thinking, okay, money's tight. 
I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Things are not looking so good for COVID in the United States. This is freaking me out. Well, I tell you, like I said at the very, very beginning of this presentation, work is blowing up for creative professionals. I know so many creative pros right now who have more work than they've ever had. It's not like the, the, the creative professional economy is contracting. It is expanding. So if you are not seeing that in your business, you should be because we are in the catbird seat right now and you should be taking advantage of that. You might be thinking, oh, I don't have the money to spend on a mastermind right now. And I want to say, do check the mindset, right? What would you invest to land a $20,000 project? Would you invest 20% of that or 4K? Let's say you cut that in half, you're a cheapskate. You invest 10, you know, 10% to get a $20,000 project, that's $2,000. That's already $500 less than the guild. What would you invest to make 200,000 a year? 10%, 20K, right? I mean, when you think about the investments, you think about what it would cost to build and do this for yourself, a conference, networking your own Zoom calls, one-on-one -on -one coaching, all of those things cost far and away more than the Guild does itself. And you don't get the feedback, you don't get the accountability, you don't get the support, you don't get the Facebook group, you don't get the recordings. And so you need to invest in your business before it's going to grow. You need to invest in it before it's going to grow, before it's going to grow. This is what you tell your clients when you're trying to get them to invest in you and your professional creative skills to get their business to move forward. Are you doing that for yourself? We know you need to win in the creative economy. That's given. And the creative economy is on fire right now. And you know you need to build your network. You know you need to build your confidence. These are all things that the Guild and a paid mastermind is going to bring you. And this is an amazing opportunity. There are a number of people who have been in previous Guilds in the chat right now. And they can tell you, and they will tell you, and I am not paying for them to tell you. They are going to tell you because they are converts. They were part of those first couple guilds that I've run. And they are, they are out there shouting to the mountaintops how amazing this was. And I don't compensate them for doing that. They just do it because they know. They know how much it has impacted their business and the network that they got overnight and the deep relationships they built in 12 weeks have transformed their businesses. So I encourage you to make an investment, grow your business and experience that guild, you know, that guild effect for yourself. If you go to BDM podcast, don't put the www in there because it takes you to a different place, all right? I know it's a quirk, but it's true bdmpodcast.com slash guild. If you go to bdmpodcast.com slash guild, what you're going to see is this. You're going to see a little landing page. It's got a grill on it. And there's a button to click through to apply now. It's got a quick exploration, explanation of the guild. And you click to apply now. When you click to apply now, it's going to take you to a form. And the process is, is that you fill out about a 10 or 12 question form. At the end, it'll ask you if you're ready to make the investment, but just say yes. It's not going to charge you then. It's just saying that you're you're thinking about it seriously. And then it gives you an opportunity to set up a Zoom call with me. I vet and interview everybody who joins the guild. So I am architecting and I am populating each guild very intentionally. I put together and curate a group of people who are going to work well and benefit each other for each guild. It's only nine people, so it's important who's in there. And so I vet and interview and build each guild very intentionally. And so you fill out the job form, you tell me about your business, what your challenges, what your successes are. I get that information. And then if you are prepared and serious about joining the guild, we jump on a Zoom call and we have a conversation. And I ask you a lot of questions, you ask me a lot of questions, and we find out whether the guild would be a good fit for you. And sometimes the guild is not a good fit for where people are in their, in their professional life or in their business. But a lot of times it is. And we'll get to the bottom of that when we have a Zoom. So with that, I want to thank you guys so much for your time um, and the hour of your time you spent with me today on YouTube. And I will take questions about networking, but um, if you go to bdmpodcast.com slash 
guild, forward slash guild, you can get involved in one of the, the best masterminds that I know of. And it's not because I run it. It's because I've seen the results in it. So thanks again. Go to bdmpodcast.com slash guild. Click through the gorilla. Fill out the form. And then let's have a Zoom and talk about your participation. And so with that, now I'm going to open it up to some Q&A. If anyone has any questions about the Guild or about networking or any of the content that I went through in today's presentation, I would love to talk about it. And I know that there's a kind of a significant lag. Um, there's a significant lag in you know, the YouTube feed, so it takes a while for people to kind of get questions through. But as, if you have any questions or concerns about anything or curious, I'm here to answer. Um, so the, the, just to kill a few minutes, the snow is accumulating in New Jersey. I have this kind of corner view in my office, and the snow is coming down, and it is piling up. I love it. It's starting to feel like Christmas around here, which is really, really awesome. Um, Mari asks, why do you think creative pros struggle so much with getting out there and networking and promoting themselves? That is a really great question. Um, <clears throat> now, hold on a second. I'm going to take this out of the presentation, and I'm just going to go to me. But I'm also going to um, put this up there. Okay. So that's the link. Um, Mari, I think that creative professionals struggle with networking because, n number one, creative pros, creatives in general, are very sensitive. They're very sensitive people. They also, many of them, have a tendency to be introverted. So you combine sensitivity with introversion and fragile emotional states and egos. And when you put those, all, all those things together, the prospect of being rejected or ignored or invalidated is sometimes too much for people to bear. And also, and this goes for non-creative professionals. It's like people who um, reaching out to prospects cold is the hardest thing to do for anybody who's doing business development. Cold prospecting is really hard. And it's nerve-wracking because you're putting yourself out there for rejection. And networking is the same way. Like I said, when I go to social media marketing world, if anyone goes to that and sees me there, Come up and say hi, because chances are I'm being a wallflower or I'm, you know, on my phone or kind of trying to avoid networking because it is uncomfortable. I'm getting better, I'm putting my hand out there, you know, but it's an uncomfortable thing to do. And so you have to exercise that muscle. And by doing a mastermind, you get an immediate network and you are forced in these set meetings to interact with people and to build relationships. And so it makes it so much easier when you are in that sort of a group where you know the other nine people in the group are aching to network too. So there's no friction, there's no rejection, there's no discomfort in that way of networking. And that's what I love about it. And also because everyone is there for the same purpose it creates this energy, this incubator energy, which has immediate results. It's amazing. And I, I, you guys, through this whole hour, you've heard me fling my hands around and get super excited. That's because I am so passionate about how this works because it transformed my transition from big corporate, big agency to being a digital entrepreneur. It was absolutely transformative. And I wanted to bring that to more people and facilitate that happening with more people. And I've started to do that and it's been absolutely amazing. And in the first two guilds I've done, it has proven itself, the concept has proven itself in spades. And so that's why I am driving this forward. And so, um, so I hope that answered your question. I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. Um, appreciate the question, Mari. And I appreciate the super chat, Bridget. That was really awesome um, of you to, to do. And Peter says, just do it. No plagiarism intended. And Peter Kendall, 
who was another Guild 2 member, said exactly the same thing. When I did a video testimonial interview with him and asked him about his, his experience in the Guild, he said that. He said, if I talk to anybody who was thinking about this, I would just say, just do it. And I know it's like a hackneyed phrase, but he said, don't even think. Like, just do it. And you will not regret it, I guarantee you. And that is, you know, that's testimonial for, for the ages, right? And um, so anyway, so that's it. Um, you guys, I'm going to just kind of hang on for a few more minutes to see if anyone else has any, um, any questions around the guild, around networking, around any of the content that I shared. Um, you guys have been amazing as usual. I hope that what I shared today was helpful to you. Um, and I just want you to know that everything that I shared with you today is what I feel really deeply in my heart. I know it is isn't a webinar and I'm promoting something, but when it comes right down to it, all of that content on networking beforehand is truth. It is the truth. It is my truth. And I would not be driving this idea of networking and masterminding if I didn't wholeheartedly believe it in my soul to be something that will benefit you deeply in your business and in your professional career because I know it works. And so with that, unless I see something that comes across my, my chat in the next 45 seconds that says question in all caps, then I'm going to sign off. So. This has been awesome. And um, again, if you, I'm gonna take the, the uh, guild thing off here. I'm gonna put something else on here, there. Um, if for any reason you are here, you're still here, and you haven't joined the Brand Design Masters Facebook group, please join the Brand Design Masters Facebook group. Um, I spend a lot of time in there. I go live in there and share content in there before I do it on YouTube. So anyone who's in there sees it first. And then there's also, in terms of networking, an incredible community of creative professionals who are in there who are intentionally networking their little hearts out and sharing content and resources and ideas and giving feedback and, and building, you know, in a free context, an amazing network. But if you want to amp it up, if you want to turn it up to 11, like they say on Spinal Tap, Brand Design Masters Guild is the way to do it. But so... With that, Namat, Peter, Dan, Mari, Amy, Joe, Joselle, of course, Kelly, Dan, all you guys, Bridget, um, Marco, uh, Pascal, all you folks, I appreciate so much your, your spending time with me today. It's been great. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the content. And if you, uh, one thing I'm gonna put up here, I'm sorry, my lower thirds. Hold on a second. Um, oh, that's not the right one. Sorry. Anyway, I'm going to go out on a technical snafu. No, here we go. Go to philipvandusen.com slash muse. Sign up for my newsletter. It's called Brand Muse. It comes out every two weeks or so. And that is, you know, by getting on my list, you will guaranteed be seeing the stuff that I'm sharing with my community. And one of the things I'm going to mention, and you heard it here first, and I think this is the first time I've really announced it on YouTube. So the people who stayed, stayed to the end, to the very end, are hearing it. In February, I'm launching my first course. It's called, going to be called Brand Strategy 101 with Philip Van Dusen. And I am going to share everything I know to get people who are curious about brand strategy up to speed so they can sell strategy to their clients. You're gonna hear a lot more about it and I'm deep in developing it and it's going to be amazing. And so go to philipvandusen.com slash muse, sign up for my newsletter, get on my email list because when I launch this course, that's how you're gonna hear about it. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your, your hanging out with me um, and I hope you enjoyed the content. And with that, um, I'm going to look very quickly one last time to see if there's any questions. No, we're good. Okay, everybody. Take care. It's good to see you.